chair as we have ably demonstrated time and time again through our CDBG program. <laughs> Last topic, the budget, the budget. We're immersed in an economic crisis that has been as widespread as it has been swift. The city is being affected, to be sure. But thanks, thanks to the fiscal policies that my team has put into place since we came into City Hall with the help of the City Council, we're in good shape. We said when we took office, we'd be honest, truthful, and accountable for the public's money. And that's a promise we've kept. One need look no further than our high bond rating. The clean audits we've received time and time again from independent auditors and a trophy case of financial reporting awards. We've set aside an unprecedented $27 million in our rainy day fund and $92 million, $92 million for other post-employment benefits as a reserve for our long-term obligations. We'll have a budget shortfall for the fiscal year becoming beginning this coming July of $50 million, attributable mostly to flattened real property, fuel and hotel room tax revenues, and fixed costs like police and firefighter pay raises, fuel and debt service. But we're going to make up the shortfall through some severe budget cuts and cost saving measures that we adopted earlier this fiscal year, like restrictions on hiring, reorganizations, leases and equipment purchases. Aside from the traditional operations and capital improvements, there are, other, there are a few other budget-related ma matters that merit mention at this time. First of all, in the interest of fiscal accountability and efficiency, I'm going to convene a citizen's panel, panel knowledgeable of first responder issues to work with our fire chief and emergency services director to explore a merger of these two agencies. There's a possibility of merger of the Honolulu Fire Department and the Department of Emergency Medical Services could present economies of scale by combining dispatch centers, supplies, equipment, and training. But any merger would proceed only if we can ensure that there will be no compromises on public health and safety. One final point. Our final financial situation this coming year will preclude us from offering pay raises for city employees represented by the HGEA, HGEA and UPW unions. While there are no expectations of layoffs or furloughs, and we certainly, certainly would oppose any cutbacks in health care and pension benefits, there simply is not enough money for raises. Finally, in a gesture that has really touched me, the appointed members of my cabinet have offered to join me in working without pay one day a month in recognition of our fiscal situation. While they devote, Sorry, Gail, I didn't tell you about that. I'm bringing home less money. <laughs> While they devote very long days and weekends in the fulfillment of their responsibilities, this is another indication of their commitment to public service. Never mind foregoing future raises, they're taking a pay cut equating to 5%. I'm so proud to serve alongside these outstanding men and women who epitomize the finest attributes of public servants and leaders. The savings will be put into a rainy day fund. Sorry, Council, I, I have plans for that money. <laughs> We're putting it into our rainy day fund, which we set aside for times when we need to really access that cash. How about a nice hand again for my cabinet? In closing, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> and my family is here, 
I'm just a local guy from Kalihi. Born and raised, Elowini Street, Camp Forth Road, went to three public schools there, Kalihi Kai, Puuhale, and Fern Elementary Schools. My siblings went on to Farrington. Noah and I had to go to a school called St. Andrew's Prior in Iolani, even though we really wanted to be Farrington graduates. <laughs> <laughs> but in growing up in Kali, we were the product of stone soup. As kids, we enjoyed the togetherness of family. We gave of ourselves for our friends. Our parents set an excellent example for me and my siblings. And they did the same for us in everything that they did with their fellow man. We learned the values that made us what we are. When I went to high school and college, my participation in student government and athletics gave me a lasting appreciation of the value of teamwork and how any contribution to a positive result or victory shared by many was far more fulfilling than an achievement enjoyed by only one person. My years in public service and as your mayor have confirmed my belief that the ideals of citizenship and the spirit of community service require active involvement and a spirit of pride in our home. While we've taken different paths to be here together this beautiful Hawaiian morning, I think your life's journey has been much like mine. Yes, our journey ahead looks difficult and demanding. The path is dark, and we don't know what all the challenges are out there that await us. But I have always been one who has not retreated from fear, who has not cowered before the unpopular, who has instead drawn strength and inspiration by doing what's right and what's pono. As I look into your faces, as I look deeper into your hearts, I see the promise of our people. I see hope and courage. I see the commitment we will need as we join hands, united in purpose, to make our Honolulu, our home, a better place. And when we reach that destination, we will get there together, nourished along the way by stone soup. We will know in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, that we were only able to accomplish this together as one Hawaii, as one people. As I said in my inaugural address, I stand ready to listen, ready to collaborate, ready to lead. Imua, let's go forward. We have work to do. Thank you very much for being here today. Aloha kea God bless you.